Christ, the show was the best. We were watching it the other night. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah. Are you and the lady? Me and the gal, but she falls asleep right away. Yeah. Any movie, she's got 15 minutes and she's out. Sounds like my, what are you dating, my dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, is your dad's name John Mabry? <laughs> Because that's who I'm dating. <laughs> oh, wow. No, close relative, actually. But my dad's name's Tracy. Your dad's name's Tracy? God, I would have had a much better joke there if I said, what's his name, Tracy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go, yeah, actually. Yeah, well, actually, let's start over. Okay. Well, I don't think we've started yet. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We are recording. So your dad's name is Tracy. Yeah. And he's not insecure about that at all. No. That's, uh, a, that's a strong will of character. Well, there's a lot of cool guys named Tracy. Tracy Morgan. Is that right? Tracy Morgan. Yeah. Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady. You know who that is? I don't know who that is. Well, he's a f- basketball player, played for the Houston Rockets. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, I'm sure that he had to listen to things like a boy named Sue and stuff like that to sort of gain his confidence <laughs> as a young man. Maybe. I, he never really seemed to... Uh, Never seemed to bother him, huh? Qualms about it. I'm sure but he fought boy, those demons when he was young. Probably. But a boy named Sue. Good song. Good song written by, not by Johnny Cash, Jill. famously performed by Johnny Cash. <laughs> yes, famously performed by Johnny Cash. Written, written by, by Shel Shel Silverstein, Silverstein, friend, friend of, the of the show, welcome, welcome anytime. Um, um, but what about this? There's two versions of a boy named Sue. Yeah, yeah, there are. One... Where Johnny, I believe Johnny changed it. Right, right. Where he tries to be funny, mm-hmm. and at the at the end he goes, "Yeah, now if I ever have a well, son, wait, wait, tell, say what the first, the, the original, the original, is. the original kind of ends on a, uh, not a somber note, but." No, it's it's, 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 a, a it's a nice conclusion. It says, "If I ever have a son, I'm going to name him Sue." Yeah, so that he can. What did he say? So that he can. I don't think basically get thick skin like I did. I don't know if he says that, but that's implied. Oh, okay. I it's implied. Because if I ever have a son, I'm going to name him Sue. That, I think oh, that's okay. It's, it's implied. Yeah. yeah. But then there's another version that is more played. I've heard this one, this version more, where <clears throat> Johnny tries to be funny and he goes, "Now if I ever have a son, I'm going to name him." Bill or George, George. Uh, anything but Sue. I, I hate that name. I still think it, that's a terrible name, and it makes me irate every time. It's I like, think it's kind of funny. It doesn't doesn't work for me. <laughs> it's not like hilarious, but it's like kind of. Funny. <laughs> but yeah, but once you hear the way it's the whole thing is a funny song. It's, it's a funny song, but it does but have it, a sweet core to it. Yeah. yeah. But at, yeah, I think it throws all goodwill out the window. It's about all of our estranged relationships with our fathers. <laughs> <laughs> Is really what it's about at its core. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he goes, son, you can kill me, and you've got the right. I wouldn't blame you if you did, yeah. right? Because I named you a girl, and you <laughs> have the right to end my life. <laughs> <laughs> so if you blow my brains out, hell, I'll pull the trigger for you. <laughs> Come here, come here. <laughs> give me a girl's name. Well, you that, get to shoot me in my head. Yeah, I gave you a shitty name. And he also left. Well, yeah, that's true. You well. name him Sue, and then he left. He skipped town. He skipped town. <laughs> and didn't he say in the beginning, because my dad was mean and whatever. He, yeah, he was a drunkard. I he, think. he cussed. <laughs> he cussed, yeah. yeah he, cussed, he swore. He, was a, he drank and swore. A philander. Mm-hmm. But at the end, it seemed to be all right. At the end, it's all right because you don't need a relationship with your dad. You just have to have one encounter with him in a bar. <laughs> yeah, you where you that. guys settle the score. <laughs> your dad can be completely absent your whole life, but if you run into him in a bar, he goes, "All right, let's settle this right now, son. Let's put this to bed." <laughs> and if you don't do that, you're not like it's like don't be a bitch, dude. Just make it um, good with your dad and then move on. Right. Are you gonna hold a grudge because he was never there? <laughs> yeah, you really only need to see your dad like. Once or twice in your life, you'll be, you'll be fine. You need to see. I'll say this: in your first five years of life, yeah, you need, you can need to see him maybe two or three times, <laughs> and then twice after that yeah. for a total of five times. But your mom every day. Your mom every day, and preferably you sleep in the same bed with her, <laughs> and, and 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 wake up, and and then she bathes you till yeah. till you die, exactly, or one, or she dies, or one of you. But you would if she dies before you, you perish quickly after that. Yeah, Freud was definitely onto something. 
Yeah, what did he say again? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, he had some really cool theories. um, And a lot of, you know, a lot of people make fun of him and try to discredit him. But in my own life and in my own experience, I've found a lot of them to to hold a lot of merit. (laughs) (laughs) So. Well, Joe, you want to start us off? Yeah, this is sort of a, so this is a, we were talking about dads. Sure. This is kind of a dad thing in my opinion or at least it's it's a very midwestern grown-up thing Uh uh-huh but now the kids are in it in on it too oh let me just dive in here mushroom foraging now where's this where's this from oh sorry this article is from the wall street journal okay so mushroom foraging which you're familiar with people go out into the woods and they collect mushrooms mushroom foraging uh sort of this pastime it, it traditionally very small group of people are into this yeah very small group of people it's like your your uncle or something like yeah, that it's, it's always like a, your uncle it's always your uncle it's like we're going on mushroom foraging he's telling you about it at easter you do, do you do not give a fuck <laughs> you don't you don't know how to get out of the conversation yeah yeah we went on mushroom foraging but anyway now that was the past now mushroom foraging is so popular minnesota plans a crackdown holy cow a crackdown on the foragers of mushrooms state officials are eyeing a limit on picking and and push the buttons of some fungi fans. They're pushing the buttons of They're fungi fans. Irritating them. They're irritating them quite a bit. So the Minnesota Department says um, they're carrying out plans to stem the pastime, limiting mushroom picking to one gallon of mushrooms. <laughs> and people in Minnesota, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with... With the people of the northern Midwest. Sure. But when you limit anything yeah. to one gallon, whether it's <laughs> chili or beer yeah. <laughs> consumption right. or mushrooms, oh. they don't like that oh, at all. Oh, they're pissed they're off. They're pissed. Yeah. These guys are looking for at least 50-gallon drums of mushrooms, <laughs> okay? So they're yeah. very upset. <clears throat> now, here's, here's where the Department of Natural Resources in Minnesota is coming from. Mm-hmm. They say there have been situations where they've had large numbers of people come in, sometimes 80 people at once, to go gathering in a small area. Yeah. You, go, you have trampling. <laughs> yeah, which what? sounds I don't understand that because you have trampling you're going to have over collection of variety of different things so if that sounds bogus to you you're not alone yeah <laughs> because everyone else in Minnesota is like what are these guys talking about <laughs> it's fine yeah and then they go well you're collecting too many of them and a lot of people including some attorneys that have been brought in and it says the whole point of mushrooms is for natural um growth spe- for no for for like uh you know the point of like berries on there is for birds to eat them and shit them out and spread so this yeah they want to be collected sure is the idea right um and the actual organism is underground so it's not like you're eradicating it right right, right. so this guy goes but they brought in a lawyer who says most of the fruits want to be picked a berry wants a bird to eat it so that it can poop out its seed in some other place <laughs> that will help the plant propagate uh-huh. and this man is an attorney yeah. uh, i think what he fails to consider is that we are not going to be shitting the mushrooms <laughs> out <laughs> into the woods for them to grow fresh ones we're right. oftentimes flushing them down a toilet down the toilet and then they I, quite frankly i don't know where it ends up Neither do I. I don't understand it, and I don't want to. <laughs> uh, but so that's where the argument is right now. It's sort of come down to about where we shit the mushrooms out at this point. Well, I'm happy to shit outside if that helps. Uh, trampling is funny because it's not like people aren't running <laughs> when it's you not Black when you, Friday. <laughs> yeah, <it's> not, <laughs> <laughs> the mushrooms aren't aren't going anywhere. You know, it, you kind of just. It's they're a, flying never, off the shelf is what they're doing. They're flying off the shelf. Well, I've never... Have you ever gone mushroom hunting? No. <laughs> Me <laughs> sounds either. Sounds insane. Something my uncle would do. Uh, yeah. Uh, it sounds more boring than regular hunting. But the mushrooms that they bring back, oh, they're the tastiest oh, yeah, mushrooms yeah, yeah. you've ever had yeah. in your life. I am coming to an age where the idea of mushroom gathering sounds a little bit better to me every day. <laughs> my, my whole life, I couldn't imagine how anyone could possibly do that. <laughs> yeah, now but it seems like something. It sounds kind of relaxing. It but does sound kind of relaxing. But, well, apparently not in Minnesota. You're liable to get trampled. Well, you're yeah, you're liable to get trampled, and you can only, I mean, what's the point of going? What's the point? Of, you can only have one gallon. <laughs> well, yeah. That. <laughs> also, I didn't know mushrooms were measured in gallons. <laughs> 
How much is that? That seems like a lot still. That's like a whole bucket, it, yeah? Yeah. I, it would help if I knew how much a gallon was. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this... Again, these aren't... <laughs> Now, nah, my grand, if my grandfather were exist. still alive, he could probably tell me what a gallon. Was. Yeah, yeah. But what true. about this? We, I feel, feel like most younger men have lost the ability. My grandpa could see a thing, see mm. like a, a pole or something. He'd yeah. go, "That's about ten feet long." Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, if I saw a pole and had to tell you how, how tall it was, I, I would have no worldly idea <laughs> how, to, how to do that. <laughs> no concept. We, see, somewhere along the way, we've lost the concept of height and weight <laughs> i think i can still do height and so i have a good spatial awareness yeah but also have a background a little bit just a little bit of like knowing the size of things but weight i don't know how anybody <laughs> if someone goes oh though oh that's probably you pick something up yeah. i have no idea yeah. this could be a hundred pounds <laughs> i have no idea yeah go pounds gallon. when did gallons come in uh, i don't it's, know it's if it's liquid but then they're talking about mushrooms but that's gallons and then there's some something about velocity i think <laughs> Y'all, don't even get me started on choo-choo trains and cars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got speed and they got volume and velocity. But That's all know, too much. I, I kind of miss the time when men were men, and I've never really experienced that time, but I've seen it in movies, and it seems like a fun fun idea. But anyway, speaking yeah, of, sort of that, different time. speaking oh. of men, and when men were men, this is from the Wall Street Journal, The Man Pre-Summer, hmm. How Men's Shorts Got So hmm. Long. Okay. Baggy, uh, below-the-knee pairs are hot, from cargo culottes to calf-kissing bloomers. Baggy shorts are back? Baggy shorts are back, baby. Let's go. I, I just, I've been waiting it out the whole time. Well, I only wear, I only wear jeans. <laughs> but maybe you could wear shorts again now. Maybe I could. You don't have to show any upper calf. No. When I was a young boy. Thigh, rather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calves, thighs. Whatever. What's the difference? <laughs> When I was a young boy, shorts were below the knee. Anything else, you were uh, a word we can't say anymore. <laughs> Which shows you how far the short shorts culture has gone. <laughs> no, I totally know what you meant. I remember being 12, and I always, if my if my mom got me shorts that were above my knees, I'd be like, I can't wear these. Yeah. Well, it shoved in a locker. <laughs> exactly. And now, and then it went to the extreme where it was like the 70s, where they were like yeah. riding up on your crotch. Almost like a Speedo. And then there is, there is, yeah. You, you saw these bros were the first well, guys back. They were, yeah. they were didn't has they didn't miss a second. Well, I hesitated for about six years. Well, yeah, I've I've hesitated my entire life. Yeah, I right. own one pair of basketball shorts. <laughs> basketball shorts <laughs> <laughs> that I wore in sixth grade when I played basketball, and then yeah, never you still got have them. I, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they, I'll throw them on, and are they hanging up in a, next to your framed jersey? <laughs> yeah. My in my frame bedroom? jersey from my elementary school basketball team, uh, the Union Ramblers. How many points did you make when you played basketball? Well, one time, this is pretty cool, Joe. This is <laughs> one of my biggest accomplishments. Well, w hey, when you have to preface it by this is pretty cool, it always is. <laughs> <laughs> one time, I once scored 19 points. In a game? In a game. That is pretty cool. And got, I had to... Leave the game early because I got a bloody nose from getting elbowed. Let's go, dude. My boy's going hard yeah. in the paint. Yeah. You want to foul out? You know, you just got bloodied I, up. I had to, I was, it was like the fourth quarter, probably about you probably, five minutes left. I got <sighs> got got a bloody nose. Could have could have hit could have hit twenty one. So probably. what came over you? You're just putting the team on your back in this game. I was a pretty good ball player. You're a pretty good ball player. Uh, yeah. And, wow. And then get and, this. And then I broke my arm. You broke your arm. Mm -hmm. And then you're done. Career's over career was over hang up the shorts hang up hang the jersey up. you don't listen in basketball you don't recover from a broken arm <laughs> <laughs> at the age of 13 yeah. we could quickly bounce back from anything <laughs> that's hilarious i made seven points over the course of my whole career wow and i played from third grade to seventh grade i wow. played for four seasons maybe five wow and i scored about seven points wow that's most of those were in the last two years first few i don't think i I had to, yeah. what, what position did you play? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> Not the bench? I don't think I. I, I was know. a guard. And yeah. Uh, until, yeah, that was, uh, quite frankly, it's still probably my proudest accomplishment. That's, an, that's insane. No, I've done nothing I used to, to that. wear a headman. Oh, I you, thought I was the well, coolest guy. Wait, in if the you're waiting, we're scoring 19 points. You're probably just getting showered and pussy at that age. <laughs> Get the headband. 
Yeah, I was banging the cheerleaders. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Everything's kind of been downhill from then, huh? <laughs> yeah, it has been downhill. But we, you, Sorry to distract you. That's we okay. Go. We got off on a little tangent, and that's kind of what the podcast is all about, mm. having fun with friends. Uh, <laughs> you, you brought, you brought the up the, 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 the bros wearing, wearing right. the short shorts. They actually talk <clears throat> about this. Oh. Let me see if I can find it. As with anything in fashion, the onslaught of shorter shorts over the past few summers has driven some of the some the other way. The look has gotten saturated, said James Harris, the co-host of the popular men's fashion podcast Throwing Fits. <laughs> you told me wait, you told me there's another podcast out there besides us? <laughs> throwing fits. I'm sure there probably is a lot of crossover between our audience and the the listeners are throwing fits. The men's fashion podcast. The men's fashion podcast. We're too fashionable boys. Too fashionable guys. I got these from the from the Gap. <laughs> uh, so anyway, he now he now associates the look with white male frat boys, which he called the death knell for any trickle down fashion trend. Right. So once it reaches the frat bros, once, it's officially. Yeah. Anything dead uh, in the eyes of fashion, and which makes sense to me. Anything associated with a date rapist, probably not. <laughs> not great for the brand. <laughs> yeah, not great for it's the brand. It's good for money. <laughs> there's so many of those guys. Yeah. So, so, well, yeah. Once it gets to the frat bros, it's over. We're back to long shorts. However, get this: the perfect length is like right below the knee. Agreed, Mertz Nicholson. And I feel like <laughs> these names they make these names wait, all wait, these wait. the the perfect length is right below the knee. Yeah, agreed. Mertz Nicholson, a twenty-one year old in Berkeley, California. Who? Well, is, now tell me this, Trent. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be perfectly honest here. Yeah, because of course, when I was twelve, I agreed with Mertz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was twelve, I agreed with Mertz. Yeah. Now, I'm obviously not a frat bro who wants the short ass shorts, mm-hmm. but I think as an adult. I think this might be an overcorrection, right? Hmm. I think that the correct length is right above the knee, but not too much more north than that, but just right above the knee. Maybe I'm just, maybe that's like a dad length. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to know. When I yeah, cuz I liked them kind of below the knee when I was but you were a kid. I was a kid. Yeah, I was about probably Mertz's age. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Mertz Nicholson, 21, student of Berkeley, California, friend of the show. Welcome anytime. Yeah, friend of the show. But he also he goes on to say he's re- he's re- recently taken to wearing lengthy jorts, but he saw a picture of someone who had baggy shorts all the way to their ankles, and I was like, I don't know if that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that they put that drivel in the the, the Wall the Street news, Journal? In the Wall Street Journal. But, no, no offense to Mertz. And no offense to Mertz, but when I was 21 and I saw a guy wearing wearing shorts all the way to his ankles, I would have just called those pants. Right. <laughs> we, had, we had a name for them. They were pants. He said, I don't know if that's it. Yeah. And they go, we got to write that down. <laughs> we that's that, we they actually go, we have got, to, make, we put we, that we have to make that the closing sentence <laughs> of the article. Oh, yeah. You're not sure if that's it. <laughs> Let's put that in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> <laughs> this just in baggy shorts not sure if that's it <laughs> so anyway wow get some jinko jeans start dressing like a juggalo you're you'll be fashion fashionable well you know what trent we might be in luck as far as fashion goes because no offense to either of us we're not the world's two most fashionable guys no 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 i don't we don't claim to be yeah we don't claim to we be. don't claim to be never but have we might never be will. we might be in luck here because hmm. let me tell you let me tell you what <clears throat> Gap just hired Mattel's Barbie Maven as its new CEO to save the company. Wow. They have hired this guy. Gap is betting that an executive who helped make over Barbie (laughs) can revive the faded apparel giant. Wow. Mm -hmm. Richard Dixon, whose name is literally Dick Dixon. Yeah. These names are... (laughs) These names they do make up, um, and this, by the way, this article is from uh, the Wall Street Journal. Okay, yeah. Um, so R- Dick Dixon, I'm going to call him Dick, but that's only because I feel friendly with him. Sure, he's the, a friend of the show. Welcome anytime, friend of the Dick show. Dixon. Welcome anytime, Dick Dixon. If you have a Dick anywhere in your name, you are welcome anytime. 
uh, President and Chief Op- Operating Officer at toy maker Mattel mm-hmm. is taking over Gap's next chief executive, ending a year-long search for a new leader. Hmm. Um, after the success of the Barbie movie, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Sure. The 55-year-old <laughs> Dickinson has spent much of his career at Mattel, where he's best known for breathing new life into the Barbie franchise. Wow. This man recreated Barbie, yeah. and now he's going to go save Gap. My question for you, Trent, is, is this guy straight? <laughs> well, do you have a picture of him here? There's a picture of him. This is him in a giant Hot Wheels. Uh, that's not really my question. It, it, it obviously doesn't matter. But one quote I thought was interesting from Gap here, they said that, quote, we lost, excuse me, they said we lost the ability to know who our customers are. <laughs> Yeah. Can you imagine sure. having, a, having a massive clothing outlet like the Gap and going, I don't even know who this is for anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just have a fucking crisis. What the, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> You're looking around. Who the fuck would wear this? Yeah. Well, it makes sense because their Gap, baby Gap, they obviously know who the customers are. <laughs> ba- babies. Right, but now it's like, which babies? Yeah. Because babies are getting fashionable now. You're wearing... <laughs> have you seen these babies out there? Well, I just... <laughs> Yeah, he's also I'm wearing <laughs> shorts down to their ankles. Maybe regular Gap should go adult Gap. And, <laughs> and then they would know who they're in. But this is interesting, because when I think of a who can turn a clothing company around, I think of a guy who used to deal in toys. <laughs> right. It doesn't sound like it makes sense, but I think it's a brilliant hire, because when you get... See, if they got a guy who turned around Abercrombie and Fitch, uh-huh. and then they bring him in to help him, did he do the same thing? Never works. It never works. Yeah. They can't replicate the success. You need somebody to think outside the box. Take everything you know about Gap <laughs> and throw that out the window. And, and by outside the box, we mean almost exclusively inside of a Barbie box. <laughs> Inside yeah, of that with a plastic shell. Sort of a plastic package. Yeah. So he's coming in. Um, and what, what, what I was going to say, one other thing here. Um, oh, I just thought this is a little bit more about this guy's mm-hmm. background and what he did for Barbie. He came in in 2000. And right around 2000 was when Barbie was get, started declining and going into what he called brand goulash. <laughs> Where retailers such as Walmart could order custom dolls that led to 17 shades of pink, six different logos, mm. the thousand different combinations. They're manufacturing a million different things. Right. And each SKU is selling like three boxes a year. And so he's scaled it all back to the getting back to one shade of pink. Yeah. No more races. It's only the one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no. But he did. He 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 reeled it in. So I mean, I I think big things are in store for the Gap Company. It will be exciting well, to see what they do. It, I'm excited, uh, and I'm rooting for him. I love Gap. <laughs> I always have, and you know that about me. <laughs> I know that about you. I know that about myself. And I wouldn't have a podcast with anyone else. Now, who, what about this? I was thinking about this because the Barbie movie came out. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going tomorrow. Are you now? Yeah. Me and the, me and the lady are going to go check it out tomorrow. Maybe I'll sit in the row right behind you guys. <laughs> You're more than welcome. <laughs> go ahead. Keep a chaperone. Keep an eye <laughs> yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you don't, I mean, you don't really hear about it too often now, but when we were growing up, people would say Barbie gives a, a terrible self-image to to young girls around the world. Mm-hmm. And I never understood that because I played with action figures. I played with He-Man, I, <laughs> a bunch of wrestling right. figures. Right. I never thought, hey, I should be I should have uh, fucking six-pack abs and, <laughs> and giant <laughs> muscles. I never thought that. I never No, I never I never thought, but I did think like when I was like I had like Dragon Ball Z action figures and stuff yeah. like that or like Power Rangers yeah I, I would spiky per- hair I would personify <laughs> them well no I would just go around being like yeah like shooting I, I would think that I was there sure. and um yeah so I thought that was great and I still think I'm <laughs> I still think I'm buff for that. <laughs> it, is, it is it has led me into a life of delusion <laughs> I think that I'm powerful and buff <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Why yeah, can't yeah. they just walk around and be like, well, Barbie made me think that I'm really hot, even if you're not. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Mi- it's just diff- the, well, maybe the men are, br- women and are different. You know what? That would be a great concept to explore in stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, well, we should write that down. <laughs> the difference is between men and women. Men and I wonder women. if that's been covered. I'm not, I'm not sure. 
But uh, yeah, no, it is it is it is a different you know thing there. I don't know, but also like I've never heard kids say that, or maybe they do say it, but it just sounds like adults saying it for kids. This Perhaps. gives them a bad self body image. But what do I know? Yeah. I don't have a daughter, yeah, that I'm aware of. I don't I don't either, and I pray to God I never do. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a gender reveal party gone wrong. <laughs> oh no, it's pink. <laughs> well, speaking test. of women, Joe, oh. this is also this is from the Wall Street Journal, oh, okay. uh, Dateline, Montana. Oh, okay. Woman killed by grizzly bear. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, it's terrible. What uh, was she? What was she wearing? It's my first question. <laughs> she asking for it no guys uh, we're not that nah, kind of show no no not we're that not that kind of show, show. Um, but i just like the way this is written okay you want to read it word for word it looks like it's only three paragraphs yeah i'll read it word for word the really the the, the first paragraph okay. kind of just made me chuckle okay got it. authorities search monday for a grizzly bear that attacked and killed a woman on a trail west of yellowstone national park near the montana idaho border <laughs> it's like they it's like they're on the hunt for a, a suspect. Twenty six hundred grizzly bear. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I think they're looking for this son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> but you yeah, it's them. like a. They, what are they? It's they're gonna arrest the. It's written like they're gonna arrest the bear. The bear is just. It's just being, being a, bear. a bear. Yeah, and she was probably asking for it. <laughs> Does it have any intel on why she got it well, killed by grizzly said they, they found her body Saturday. She was apparently she was jogging in. Well, in see Yellowstone. that's strike one right there. Yeah, man. Yellowstone National Park. She's probably wearing a tight bodysuit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, now do, tell me this: Does it say was the grizzly bear at any point erect? <laughs> was this a crime of passion and, and lust? Well, there's. It doesn't say anything about that, but there's a quote here from the poli- the the chief of police that said, "Boys will be boys." I don't know yeah. sure what that's about, but uh, <laughs> but uh, her name hasn't been released. But I just like the idea. I mean, that listen, not this. Obviously, this is a sad story. But if you're gonna jog yeah. in Yellowstone National Park, that's kind of the risk you take. <laughs> Yeah. 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 If you're going to jog in Yellowstone National Park, the place <laughs> covered in grizzly bears, yeah. and let's be honest, you're not exactly going to be you know, prudent about what you're wearing, <laughs> then yeah, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if an extremely violent and horny grizzly bear... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is, no, this is, this is from the, the Wall Street Journal? <laughs> it's Wall Street um, Journal. A, tra- and, uh, a trail camera captured an image of a grizzly bear with two cubs in the area on Saturday night. Yeah, this is probably this a, is a, f- um, this is a father. Or it could be a mama bear, actually. Also, maybe yeah, it wasn't it's a... 2023, we don't want to <laughs> <wanna> judge <laughs> male bears, or female bears. Can right. do horrible yeah. acts as well. Right, wow. So um, it must have been sort of like a woman on a woman. But thing. anyway, I hope, I hope they catch this son of a bitch and, oh. and put this fucker down. <laughs> <laughs> we can't stand for we can't stand for this. Yeah, uh, it's, we got to clean up. I hope the we, moment it's the, time somebody cleans up Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, you got to clean up the geysers. <laughs> <laughs> clean up the geysers. Yeah, they should shoot that grizzly bear in the head <laughs> with a revolt with a handgun. <laughs> Not even a rifle. Just yeah. to, well. It's interesting. So it sounds like either, you know, she's obviously gone, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. It sounds like the bear is missing. <laughs> um, you know, well, who the up? bear's on the, on the lamb. Well, the bear's on the lamb. What kind of makes you wonder what happened to the bear? Somebody else is, <laughs> is missing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is the worst segue in the world. <laughs> But this is this is an article from uh, the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, and this this headline says mystery deepens around China ex minister. Mm. And let me tell you what's so mysterious about this, Trent. Um, well, China's foreign former minister, who was replaced on Tuesday after he went missing from public view for more than a month. <laughs> My God! Are there, first of all, are there any bears in China? <laughs> um. <laughs> There's panda bears. There's the panda bears. Yeah, they're different, and they're and they're very endangered, and they can kill whoever they want to. And you know, <laughs> we're, we're not going to shoot them because there's not enough left. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, he. So so this guy went missing for mm. a month. He was replaced in his role. Yeah. Um, 
and and but now he is also disappearing from parts of the foreign ministry's website an oh. erasure that is intensifying intrigue about what happened to him jesus <laughs> This so, so sounds like a kind of a Back to the Future situation where you, you, you remember Back to the Future where he's just trying to have sex with his mom. He's trying. No, well, yeah, sure. But this guy's trying, obviously, trying to have sex with his mom. <laughs> no, but in oh, the Back yeah, to the Future, no, no, I'm he, that now. he, yeah. they, he, he sort of. Uh, I, I believe he, in the present time, he kind of starts disappearing. His body disappears. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like fading away yeah, he's as fading. he's messing up the past. Yeah. That's interesting. That might be what. So that maybe they should look into. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it's being kind of a back to the future type situation. Yeah, no, I don't know if they've thought of that. I wonder if there's a call in number for the Wall Street Journal. Um, authorities didn't provide a reason for their decision to remove. I'm going to mess this up. I'm going to say it's Win Gang. It's Q I N. How do you pronounce that? Win? Win? I don't know. Yeah. Quinn? Quinn? <laughs> I'm going to say Quinn. Let's go with Quinn. <laughs> Quinn Gang from his post, which has been filled by his predecessor, Wang Yi. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, they, speci- they, they they cited unspecified health reasons for his absence. Wow. And this was a, a common thing during the Mao-era Communist Party, where Chairman senior Mao. officials were... Yeah, <clears throat> ch- excuse me, Chairman Mao. <laughs> Chairman Mao, friend of the show, welcome <laughs> anytime. <laughs> yeah, friend of the show, welcome anytime. Um, where they would... Senior officials would go missing and um, would be removed from photos. Um, hmm. Yeah, so... <laughs> this is my favorite part, though. Asked about the changes Wednesday, Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning said the website was being updated according to protocols. <laughs> Bombarded from questions by reporters on his status, Mao said she had no new information to provide. She goes, guys, listen, this is just standard website stuff. <laughs> We're cleaning up the website. Sure, sure. sure, I don't know where he is. Did we replace him? Yeah. But gosh darn it. Yeah, we scrubbed every photo of him in bio and, yeah. and, and reference in any article off of our website. But this is just This is just standard hygiene. standard protocol. Website hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> this is protocol. So that actually gave me quite a bit of relief because based on the the, the name of this article, I would have thought something dubious happened, but Nah, yeah, well, but, yeah, it makes it seem that it's written. Of it's course, written, this sort is, of a shock yeah, flash it's, kind it's, of. But now it seems like sort of, sort, sort of clickbait. <laughs> it's clickbait because <clears throat> the foreign ministry spokeswoman said it's fine. And it's said it's fine. The, and she's given us no reason to doubt her. So, Yeah, I mean, I have no reason not to believe her. She's just updating a website. And, and beyond that, I have no reason not to um, doubt the Z... Z administration. Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. Z, I call him ex- Exai. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I like what they're doing over there. Um, now, yeah. Chairman Mao, can you, is his body, he, didn't his body used to lay in, in, you could see he's like in a glass case, or is that? You're thinking, of, you're thinking of Richard Nixon's head in Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> No, I, I didn't know the, this. I never knew this. You could. Oh wait, no. I've seen. I've, like, I've seen an illustration of this or something. I think there's like him laying down, and you go see him. Is he I still? Think so, but I was gonna. I was hoping you would know. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he can still do that or not. You'd think he'd be uh, mummified. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm not sure how they do things. I don't think you know. We might have overshot. You know, that might be further east than where the mummies have. <laughs> normally come from sure, sure, sure. <laughs> but i you know that's a blind spot and i i'm pretty good with western history but i yeah. need to brush up on my chinese history I, don't, I mean obviously i know it was a communist country and it was largely impoverished up until very recently mm, mm. and um but yeah i don't know <clears throat> there's also an article i saw that i didn't clip out that says uh the young people like us like a, a fourth of them are unemployed and, oh but it's not for a lack of jobs it's for a lack of jobs that people want well, it sounds and, like it. Yeah. And Zai is like, well, go fucking on the rice fields and shit what I did when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> when everything sucked. Right. And they're like, jeez. Well, nobody wants to work anymore. No, that, that's exactly what he's saying. Yeah. And that's exactly, that's why I agree with the administration in China on that. Nobody wants to work anymore. I, yeah. Nobody wants to work anymore. And I, I know I don't. <laughs> yeah. I'll be completely honest. Yeah, but no, nobody wants to work anymore. And then no, nobody, people pretend like they don't know why okay but the answer is in every news article ever written uh, it's all horrible things every day 
every day is the hottest day of the year. <laughs> and every news article is like, well, yeah, 15 more years, there's not going to be any more fish. All, all, the, all the bees are dying. And then the next, the, the, the New York's going to be underwater in 10 years. And then the next article is like, nobody wants to work anymore. We can't figure out why. <laughs> People seem demoralized. <laughs> They, people, I guess, are asking, what am I working towards? <laughs> yeah. Well, you won't be able to enjoy your retirement. You'll probably be working, and then a great giant flood will be <laughs> will come wash over you while you're I, clocked uh, in at Arby's. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah exactly. So, I mean, hey, personally, I, I love to work. I love to go to work, and I envision in 15, 20 years from now, I'll be this nice little restaurant. It'll be f- uh, sort of a floating restaurant <laughs> in Manhattan because, you know, the sea levels will have risen. And I'll say, what what fish is on the menu? What's the fish of the day? <laughs> and he'll go, well, we have a uh, biomedically grown fish, if you want that. Well, we have the uh, the impossible fish. We have the beyond fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, this will be an AI platform that I'm speaking to. But anyway, but I'm going to keep uh, contributing to my to my 401k. <laughs> I just didn't realize the case of for Kelvin. Really? Well, it's the it's a temperature. Kelvin, 401 degrees Kelvin would be very hot. <laughs> uh, so anyway. Oh, that's actually a brilliant joke. Thanks. It was actually so good that I didn't even, uh, it just bounced right off my dumb, <laughs> thick fucking cranium. That's yeah, right. That is the future we're, we're looking at. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so anyway. You should really get more work in this time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to tell people. Uh, but about, what about this? I'm thinking of smart, smart gadgets. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Smart gadgets protect your home, but also collect data. <laughs> this is a breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> when are they going to tell us about this, Trent? <laughs> Technology safeguards your family and saves money targeting water leaks, fires, and burglaries. Hmm. Now, but is it worth it giving up some privacy to make sure your home doesn't burn to the ground? Here's my answer. No. <laughs> Fuck off. First of all, it's got this lady right here. Yeah. Over. Julie Jargon. Another fucking made up name. <laughs> Julie Jargon. Yeah, you know, it sounds like a pile of jargon. <laughs> fucking bullshit article. <laughs> but anyway, it's a giant article. Basically, all it talks about is insurance companies now. They want you to install all these like leak, de- yeah. leak detection sensors and electrical sensors and stuff, and they'll give you a discount. But they also... <laughs> They also collect your data. It's really they give it's you a discount sick. to spy on you. Oh, for Christ's uh, sake! But but but, but uh, calm down, uh, Joe. I'm because hot, I'm getting hot and bothered. Yeah, I, I'm can getting, tell, I'm getting, I can tell. Yeah. I can sense your energy. Uh, th- this this ought to calm you down. Yeah. A State Farm spokesman says the company doesn't use the data provided by the sensors <laughs> to determine rates. <laughs> However, oh, they said to determine rates. Yeah. <laughs> However, homeowners who don't rectify known hazards could face. Rate increases later on. So they actually do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so they do. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I just have to read this for myself <laughs> sure, now. A State sure. Farm spokeswoman says the, they don't use the data to determine rates. However, homeowners who don't rectify known hazards could be in f- face rate increases. <laughs> so This is insane. So he says they don't, but in the next sentence, they actually do. <laughs> so I hope that, that kind of cools your nerves that cools my nerves yeah yeah that's nice but you know i think it's worth it just for a little added protection it's worth the debt for added protection and to save five dollars to give up all your rights um (laughs) (laughs) but anyway here's the closing statement here anytime something think this is things to consider anytime something is connected to the internet there's a possibility of it being compromised (laughs) why why is that the case (laughs) Well, there's yeah, these the evil hackers. hackers. Oh, the hackers. Yeah. Yeah. Hackers. Uh, They're hacking but, to my Alexa. Yeah. But what about this? We don't, we, I mean, we don't really have a doorbell or anything, but these ring doorbells, how do you feel about this? Because I'm anti. Yeah, I'm anti too. You know, my brother and sister-in-law, friends of the show, welcome anytime. Sure. Uh, got one of those things. And I mean, uh, I just think it makes you you realize how much shit's going on right outside on your yeah. patio in the middle of the night. It's like a it's like a horror movie. They're looking at the <laughs> next yeah, day, yeah. and there's just like a guy like it's like in <laughs> just like right there looking at the thing. Yeah. You just you don't need to know. About you don't it. need yeah. You don't need to know. I, I would rather remain blissfully ignorant. If some guy wants to jack off on my porch, that's between him and the porch. Every single night <laughs> between him and the porch. Yeah. yeah. Every single night from four thirty to five fifteen, night after night. It's between him and the poor. Yeah, I don't need to know that. That's just going to ruin my day. So Yeah, if nothing happens at all except for one guy 
who comes and masturbates on my porch every night. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to be made aware of that? <laughs> yeah. It's not he's not hurting anybody. It's, if, it's if, too much for me to figure out. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 we're too we know too much we know too and much. in turn we know very little at all. Ah, oh, that's sort of one of maybe one of the th- emerging themes of the show i think it is it is, does <laughs> seem to be coming up a lot now All right. uh that i have one more this is a quick little i, I like a button one. i don't have a button so All this right. is now this is from pepper and salt our old friends pepper and salt <laughs> our old friends pepper and salt <laughs> now friends this one we were pretty hard on pepper, pepper and salt in a in a previous episode uh-huh. uh we didn't really get the joke in 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 the pepper and salt uh, uh, strip, and for context, the pepper and salt is a cartoon, a in, comic strip in in the Wall Street Journal. Oh, this is from the Wall, Wall Street Journal. Now this one, <laughs> this one's kind of cute, and I, I will have to go get something. So, but I, I'll read it first. Okay, you have to go get something. Uh, yeah, this it's two ladies. I'll hold it up to the the camera. Yeah, we we can cut this in and post too. We can cut it in and post as well. We'll have to hire a guy, but we'll have to get the special effects okay. uh, it's two ladies they're staring at a, a plant on the counter and the captain reads wow i've never kept a basil plant alive long enough to realize it grew flowers and now uh, you can stare at this and maybe kill some time and then i'll go get uh, 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 something okay, okay. yeah you go grab something. wow i've never kept a basil plant alive long enough to realize it grew flowers my biggest issue with pepper and salt from the Wall Street Journal is I can't tell if they're supposed to be funny or informative or what what it is they're going for conceptually. Well, I think it's uh, just to make you go, hmm. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a basil plant. Not to brag. And not to brag, but I, I, this is, I, I would say this kind of falls on the, the category of it's funny because it's true. It's funny because it's true, but ours hasn't flowered. It hasn't flowered. Well, we yeah, we are barely keeping this fucking thing alive. Hey, we're doing a pretty good job <laughs> in this one compared to last year's yeah, plan. Well, I mean, it's still pretty dry. Well, so but we have a lot to. Well, we have if we keep watering this, we 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 have something to look forward to: flowers. <laughs> and we've learned that in pepper and salt. And pepper and salt. So, which isn't uh, always the funniest. But it might be informative. And well, it's informative. That might be the same with and that's ours. That's kind of how I like my 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 comedy to be to to be informative <laughs> and kind of make you give give you a go. Huh. <laughs> you know when I yeah when I consume comedy I'm in it for the huh I'm in it for the huh yeah I would uh, yeah I would like to make uh, not for the ha ha I'm not, not I'm all. not in it for for making people laugh I'm in it for the 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 smiles I'm in it for not even the smiles but the yeah, a little smirk. Ah. Because I believe that the purpose of being on this earth is to gather as much information as possible. <laughs> it's not about it's not about coming to a higher understanding of anything or to find something new about your own experience. It's to just gather facts. <laughs> And it's not to think critically about those facts. It's just to know them. No, just to just to know them, yeah. and like a like a, <clears throat> um, um, uh, you can just reference them at any moment in any conversation, um, and maybe even use them to one up anyone you talk to. Yeah, and hopefully that person, when you say the fact like basil plants, did you realize basil plants grow flowers? They'll go, huh? <laughs> They'll go, huh? I, they might, they I, might have a fact of their own. They and might then, have a fact of their own, then you could exchange facts. You could exchange facts. Um, and that's really what I think conversation should be. should just be exchanging facts. And I think that the purpose of technology should be to listen in on that exchange. You know, <laughs> yeah, the purpose of technology should be to, be to watch over our every move. Yeah. Technology is like this. It's listening and make sure we state facts and and <laughs> we don't we don't do any and, deeper and dive an, than that. And an alarm goes off if we say anything untrue. <laughs> so, so that's the world we're gonna that's, that we that's the live moral in. of today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> we hope yeah. you enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you for listening to Echo Chamber as always. As and, always, uh, like and subscribe, share, follow. Yeah, Trent. check out shit. check out Trent stuff. Check out my stuff. Yeah, check out yeah. Joe's stuff. And, and that's uh, it. That's the show. We didn't even talk about you met uh, Ben Stiller last night. We met. I met Ben Stiller. Yeah. Ben Stiller was at my comedy show at Stand Up New York. Yeah, pretty crazy. 
Trent was hosting. I was hosting for York. Luke Knoll, a uh, very funny guy. Friend of the show. Welcome well, anytime. Friend of the show. Welcome anytime. Yeah. And, and I, we mean that, actually. We actually really mean that. <laughs> yeah, we both opened for him in Boston. Great guy. Very hilarious. Super yes, talented. Very funny. And Ben Stiller came to the show, and I talked to him afterwards, and uh, he told me I had a, a great set, and I was kind of at a loss for words. Wow. And... Uh, but, but I tell you this, stand up New York, not a not a huge place. I knew where you were sitting. I could hear him laugh. That was one of the most surreal moments that, of my life. That has to be just next level yeah, to I hear up, the Stiller. Yeah, a guy I grew up watching, and love is Zoolander. Oh. All his movies, Dodgeball, something about Mary, something about Mary, Tropic Thunder, Tropic Tropic Thunder. Yeah, I, I was actually thinking about maybe giving that a rewatch. Has he done a single comedy that's not fantastic, except for all the ones we won't mention? <laughs> I mean, he really has a great track record. He's got a crazy and track record. He's he's kind of transitioned into directing. He directed a show called Severance. Yeah, uh, which I get, there's funny parts, but it's a great show. People love to talk about how great Adam Sandler was and Mike Myers and all those guys, who I love to death as well. Sure, but I think Ben Stiller's got to be the most underrated lead man in '90s, early 2000s comedy. I, I would agree 100 percent, like by a mile. Yeah. I yeah. might throw on some Ben Stiller movies today. We but that's should. such a cool experience for you. I'm so glad you got to have that. Oh, that's thanks, that's man. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great. Yeah. I was I was feeling pretty good. That's that's uh yeah, something you'll never forget. So go check out Trent Stand Up. The Stiller himself is a huge fan. <laughs> I know I'm a big fan, so go check that out. Oh, too. thanks, buddy. Yeah. Well that's it. That's the show. Thanks for tuning in. Bye bye. We'll see you next time. <laughs>